All right, so I'm going to show how to disassemble an MSI GE62 6QF Apache Pro. So first what you want to do, close the screen and flip it over. I already took apart most of this just so it's easier to do with one hand while recording. Um, so what you want to do, remove the 15 screws from the bottom. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15, okay? Remove all those screws. After that, you can pull the CD tray out. Just get your fingernail between here and then you can kind of pull it. If it's stuck, just wobble it a little while you're pulling it and it'll come out. After you remove the 15 screws, there's three more underneath the CD drive. And then what you wanna do is you have to kind of pry around the edge to lift up the case. Um, lift, don't lift this side uh, because this side, the um, uh, headphone and microphone jacks are kind of blocking it, so you actually want to lift the case at an angle. So I'll show you. So what you do is you go around, and I use my fingernails and kind of just pry along. Right now they're unsnapped, but if I were to snap one down, let's see if I can. Okay, basically you just go along. Oh, it didn't snap back, but probably because they left stuff disconnected. But anyways, you go all along. Um, you don't need to lift under here because you might break it, so don't don't lift on that. But lift on the solid plastic sides, and then just go all the way around. Okay, just like that. Go around the back. Follow the follow the lines. So as you see, it like drops. There's like a sharp line here. So you just follow all the lines. Go all the way around. And then once you finish, you can actually lift this side at an angle like this, and then you can kind of wiggle it to get, get it disconnected from all the sides over there. All right, so I'll show the bottom shell. So this is what it looks like. All right. Okay, so this model, they actually designed it to be a very big pain. Um, for the screws, make sure you keep them in order because there's different size screws. Um, on the bottom, most of them are the same except for the three in the CD spot. But on the motherboard, there's a like quite a few different size screws. So to remove the motherboard, what you want to do is there's this little black latch thing here that will have this cable, and you need to like move it up with your nail. And then after you do that, so this cable would normally be inside the slot. So if it's up like that, so. Normally this cable, it's hard to do this with one hand, but if you open it, you'll see. Basically, this cable will be inside the slot in here. So once you lift up this black thing, you can actually just wiggle it and pull it out. Okay, and then same thing with this one. Flip that up and then pull this cable out. Um, this one's going to kind of be a pain because the tape. You'll want to lift this tape out, and then this tape you're going to have to... Um, peel it up and pull it all the way back and then the connector is basically the same as you can see It's like a different color, but um, basically you have to flip up this black piece and then you can pull this back Okay, it's very difficult to put these things back because it's kind of weird how they bent it like this but, um, Yeah, and then for the wireless antennas you have to move the tape out of the way and like all the other models, you basically, you want to pull from the back of the antenna and then kind of just pull it up, okay? Don't try and pry from the front. If you pry from the front, you can damage it. So just get as close to the the tail of the metal piece of the connector and then just pull it up and it'll pop out. All right, so here you can see the SSD. They put, I believe this is a regular SATA because it has two notches in it. But, um, here you can see the SSD. All right, and then there's normally a SATA. Let me show you here. Sorry, I took all these things out. But uh, there's normally the SATA SATA drive here, and also the speaker under here. But um, the SATA drive is basically just slotted into this, so it's just inserted like that. There's two screws here that you'll have to remove to get it out. But basically, you raise it up a little bit and then pull it back because the speaker will be in its way but you lift it up a little and then you kind of just wiggle it like that and pull it out. Okay, and I'll show you the speakers real quick. Let's see how we put this. So 
So the speakers will basically be like this. And there's these little circle rubber things that mount it in place. To remove it, you kind of just kind of wiggle it and pull it and it'll it'll slowly slide out of the rubber piece okay so I start you know, I start with the left one because there's this piece that's taped here and then when you get to the tape just pull on it and it'll peel off and then make sure um, to disconnect this um, this speaker or the hard drive would be in the way but to get the speaker out you basically grab the two like wider ends and you kind of just keep wiggling it wiggling it and then you can pull the whole thing out okay once you get that out you can set both speakers aside all right they're attached together so just be careful with that um, there's also the battery that was in there so the battery the way it attaches so like this it just goes down like that there would be one screw holding it right here so once you have the screw out what you do is you just pull it up at an angle like that and then you can lift it out like this all right and then there's another screw that was over here so, I mean, not screw, speaker. So you see these two metal posts. This speaker actually goes on there and you remove it in the same process. Um, and the connector um, for the speaker goes right here. Same thing, you grab the two ends with your nails and you kind of just wiggle it to remove it. Just wiggle when you're while you're pulling it, wiggle it. Don't pull straight back because the force can actually break off these side connectors I've seen on other computers. Some people broke theirs. Um, and then the fan connector, uh, you actually don't have to take that out. I just left it disconnected. Let me put that back. All right. Okay, and then the DC jack, this is difficult to remove because you don't have much room, but basically you have to do it while you're lifting the board. Um, same thing, um, you can't really grab here to wiggle it. So what you do when you lift the motherboard, you can actually wiggle it. I'll show it in a bit. So I showed how to remove that. So that's the main one. Now you got to remove all the screws. <clears throat> you don't have to remove the screw that's on this board. I took it out because I wasn't sure. I thought it like complete, like completely went underneath the fan, but this is a separate board. So you don't need to remove this screw, but you need to remove the screw on that's holding the fan here and here. All right, so remove those two and then remove the two fan screws on this one as well, the one that's here, under here, and then the other one that's under this cable here. So to access this screw, you're gonna have to remove this and undo the, the wires that are routed along here. Okay, and then you can remove that screw. And then you have to remove all the screws from the motherboard. So this one came with the battery, so you already moved it. Then you wanna remove the one that's here, and then you wanna remove the screw here, here, let me see if I'm missing any, okay. And then you wanna remove this screw here, remove this screw here. Um, I don't think there was a screw there. Um, and you wanna remove, I believe there was one, maybe there was one here, but just keep them all in order. And then um, if you see any screws on the board, remove it. I don't think there was one there either. I think these are actually all for the case the case screws so they just hold the case on most of them they'll have like a mark here to tell you like how um, the size of the screw so like m2 l3 so these are I believe this is like the length is three or something so I think two is like it's a two millimeter wide screw and then three millimeter long so the fans will have some different size but they don't label it here so Oh, actually, M2, L4, so you can see the length is different. M2, so here, L4. So you can see they actually label it. So make sure you just keep in mind all the size of the screws, and then you're good to go. So once you make sure, you remove this. You remove the speakers here. You removed um, the LCD cable here, the two antennas, and... Um, and then this cable, you can start to lift it. This DC jack, you're probably gonna have to lift the motherboard before you can remove that. Um, but what you do when you lift it, you basically um, slightly wiggle the cable. Try not to pull too hard while you're wiggling, but just wiggle it and slowly pull it, and eventually this will disconnect. When you put it back, you're gonna have to like have the board slightly raised and then and then connect it while you're while you're putting it back down, okay? And when you do that, also make sure you're not trapping any of the, like this cable and these cables underneath the board. Otherwise you're gonna have to take it back out again. All right, so 
the RAM. Let's see what it uses. So the RAM, here you go. DDR4, 2133P, right? Just in case you need to change the RAM or upgrade it. Um, if it has 16 gigs of RAM like this one, you don't need to add more. That's more than enough for almost everybody. But some people don't want to increase it. Um, the hard drive, you can also upgrade to a 2.5 inch SATA SSD if you want. Okay. So that's mostly it. There's the um, CMOS battery here. And let me see, in case I didn't mention, but I'm pretty sure that it's a SATA M.2. It has two notches. I don't know if this supports NVMe. Um, if you want to know, you probably have to just Google that. But um, yeah, if you're not sure, just, just let me know. Um, so yeah, once again, once you remove all those things, make sure, go around again, see if you removed all the screws. <coughs> and then... You should, don't try, don't pull too hard on it, um, but if you pull it, you should feel like it's coming up, and then while you're holding the keyboard up, again, wiggle this one and then remove it. Um, when you lift the motherboard, you want to be careful because the keyboard and trackpad cables and the backlight, keyboard backlight cables are all connected underneath, but um, what, what you do is you lift here, so you'll have to also move these cables out of the way while you're lifting. So it's kind of a pain. Let's see here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. It might be difficult. All right. So lift there. So I already disconnected the keyboard and trackpad stuff. But what you do, you lift it like that. All right. So this is going to be a pain. But um, yeah. Basically, this cable will be connected under here. It will be connected into this. And to remove it, what you do, you won't even have much room, but you basically you use your fingernails and you see these brown things, you just pull them down. And when you pull these down, it'll release these cables. So same thing with the small one. This is for the backlight, um, for the keyboard. But you pull those down and then these cables, you can easily like pull them out. All right. So once you remove both of those, then your motherboard is completely disconnected and you can actually lift it out. Just be careful with it. You don't want to put it on anything staticky or anything. You can damage it. So just set it down, set it aside. All right. Normally I don't really do all these complete motherboard disassemblies for my videos, like how to take it out because usually I don't need to do it, but this one was having a keyboard problem. And to remove the keyboard, I had to take the motherboard out, which is kind of a stupid design. I don't know who did this. Um, and then also the keyboard, the way to remove it, if you have a bare keyboard, it's very difficult. You actually have to break all these red plastic things out, and you're going to have to peel all this black plastic out and get all the red things that are underneath the red plastic um, just to get it out and then after that to put it the a new keyboard you're gonna have to melt new plastic or some kind of glue but you're gonna need to also um, what I do for the keyboard keys because if you don't um, the keyboard might be sunk underneath the frame of the keyboard so it won't be um, the popping out as much as it is um, I have to like cut up pieces of cardboard to put underneath the keys that pull it into the frame but um so if you're planning on replacing the keyboard yourself, um, try and buy this whole plastic piece because if you're going to try and replace this, it's going to be a lot of work and you're probably going to end up breaking stuff and it's not going to go back together properly. But if you look at the keyboard, you can see all the holes in the back, like the little circle ones around the keys. Those are all going to have like melted plastic holding it in place. But um, that's pretty much it for this. Uh, let me see if I can show you. So, um, the processor is actually soldered in place, so you can't replace it. And also the graphics card, they're all like part of the board. And then the wireless card you can replace and the fans you can replace. But to replace the fans, you're most likely going to have to take the heatsink out and redo all the thermal paste. Um, and then on the bottom, you can see the other end of that connector that connected out on this side. And that's pretty much it. So... Other than this, these two keyboard connectors and the way they um, sealed the keyboard into here, 
Um, I guess it's a nice design, but if you have to do anything with the keyboard or take the motherboard out, it's a real big pain. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you, um, please uh, help me out by liking and subscribing. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section below and I'll try and help you out. Um, I do these repairs for a living, so this isn't my computer. I don't, um, I won't have it after you see this video, um, but I'll try and help you any way I can. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.